Joining us now, Texans Radio, it's head coach Lovey Smith. Coach, tell us what this week is like. No game. You got 13 days before the opener. Uh, kind of recovery a little bit. That's a big part of it. Guys have gone through an awful lot. Uh, of course, name you know, establishing the roster as we go forward. But continuing to grow as a football team. I mean, we just got through a practice this morning. So that's important. Keep everything going. For the most part, we're healthy. And that excitement of, you know, first game of the year is coming quickly. Is there, I don't want to say more excitement, but is there more excitement because it is a divisional opponent and it's a divisional opponent that is thought to be the best in the division, the Indianapolis Colts? Is there more excitement because of that, Coach? Oh, I think you can easily say there's more excitement for that. And not only, you know, division opponent, one that dominated us last year. Yeah. So for us to, I mean, we think we're a better ball club. And uh, every step along the way that we've, you know, really evaluated where we are, uh, it says that we're better, but uh, we need to do it now uh, versus the Colts. We know that they're a good football team in a lot of areas, uh, but we're excited about playing to see exactly where we are. So training camp, media, fans, we're able to watch a lot of practice. Now practices are closed, Coach. And do you work on getting better at football and those things or game planning, combination, I'm sure, but how do you handle all, the, all we, that? For sure, we want to continue to develop as players. We're not there yet. But, you know, the preseason, most teams uh, are going to do a lot of things differently. Mm -hmm. uh, there is game playing involved right now, absolutely. Uh, we've already started it. We know Again, we know who our opponent is, so a lot of things that we didn't do in the preseason, of course, we'll be doing during the regular season, and you can start honing in on those things now. Coach, the CBA doesn't allow you to have a bunch of padded practices, even from now through the end of the year. As a coach that wants his team to be physical and win physically, how does that change things for you as you prep to get ready for an opponent like the Colts in particular, but just for a whole season – in which you want to be that physical, but yet in practice, you really can't practice being physical. Yeah, I, I'm a big boxing fan, you know, and they don't go and slug it out, you know. They spar right. an awful lot. Mm -hmm. So I believe in that. Uh, we didn't tackle. We didn't do anything full uh, during training camp, but I think you can get in position. So we'll continue. I think you can still be a physical ball club. Guys know when you need to be that way. And with a long season, you just really can't. So that's just a part of it. But our mindset that we have should always be about being physical. As we set our roster up, it's about being physical. You said mentioned being a boxing fan. A, do you use boxing analogies as you talk to the team? And B, who's your boxer? I, we use every any tool we think will help get the point across a little bit. But, you know, I'm, I'm becoming a little bit older. So, yeah. uh, of course – Ali Frazier, um, mm. George Foreman is an East Texas guy, yep. you know. Um, and, of course, the young boy. I don't know as much about the young box. I'm kind of UFC fighter now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. All right, very good. Coach, as you get the roster down to 53, I know the practice squad is 16 players, so you get to keep a lot of the players that you want to keep that have been with you throughout camp. What is it like practicing today and tomorrow and making the cuts along the way, that whole process? Because you have to coach, you have to participate in that process as well. What is that like? What can you share with us? Well, it's uh, challenging. Um, but you mentioned, you know, everybody, hey, when are you getting down to the 53? But it really is about 69 as you count mm -hmm. the practice squad guys. And we have one international player. So where is about the 70 that we get down to? The next two days will be more challenging. Tomorrow will be the actual day that we start cutting guys, uh, getting the roster down. So when we don't practice tomorrow, but Wednesday we do have a practice. Mm. That's when we'll have to piece it together a little bit. Around Thursday, though, for Thursday's practice, we'll be at full force ready to go. Coach, you talk about recovery, and the first thought is, oh, yeah, the players after a tough preseason, but it's also for coaches, too. During that sort of recovery time, how will the coaches sort of recover with, I don't know, maybe a day off here, a day off there? How will your coaches and you recover to get ready for the season? Well, you know, our recovery is a little bit different. Um, we, we do. You know, nowadays, you know, after the last preseason game, we had, what, 17 days left. So we'll take a couple of days here and there uh, to watch high school game. We have coaches with, you know, high yeah. school athletes playing and all of that. But – now is it, it's about the grind. The grind has started uh, throughout, and um, 
You know, even if we're not here, I mean, we're home now. We're in that football mode forever. Coach, correct me if I'm wrong, but positives from the preseason that you can take with you into the regular season, getting after the quarterback, getting some pressure in the backfield. You did it last year. You did a whole lot more of it even during the preseason. That looks to be trending in the right direction as you head into the regular season. Yes, and our team, our defense, our defensive line, they know what it's about. Uh, the defensive line is the engine of our defense. They make everything go. Uh, we put a big emphasis on them. In order for us to play great defense, they have to show up each play. We saw a lot of signs from the preseason, absolutely. We have good depth. We saw that in the preseason. And that will just need to carry on as much as anything. Coach, you got some young players on this roster who have never played in an NFL regular season game where obviously not only does the intensity ramp up, but if you're a starter, you're going to play a lot more than maybe you were playing in the, in the regular or in the preseason. For rookies, what's the best mode for them to, to sort of ha handle a regular season game as opposed to training camp in preseason where that volume gets turned up to another three notches? Well, you're right. A lot of our players, you know, they play big time ball. Yeah. A lot of people in the stands. I don't think that's going to affect them much right. once you come to the NFL. But uh, you mentioned uh, just right now, you know, in the preseason, you know, our guys have played maybe a half. Yeah. The difference will be once we start the regular season, some of them will be playing the entire game. And veterans can talk to them a little bit, but you keep training that way. Yeah. We have an excellent. Uh, strength and conditioning, medical staff to get the guys prepared. But I think that'll be the biggest adjustment. And eventually the amount of games. You know, it's, it's no 12, 13 yeah. games. I mean, we're playing, we're playing over 20. So, uh, but our players will adjust. Coach, you've been very clear. You're a running football team. You want to be physical. You said that your favorite play from the game on Thursday against the 49ers was that nine-yard run by Pierce and the lead blocking by Harrison, that kind of thing. It seems like that sort of play gives everybody a lift, offense, defense, special teams, the whole organization, really. Yeah, when you know we're talking about being physical, uh, we just can't talk about it. You know, We have to show it. And that play showed what type of football team we want to be. You know, fullback, 21 personnel, lead week. There's no running and hiding. Everybody, you know, that, you know, the 15th round of the heavyweight fight, you know, with a minute left, 30 seconds left, and, you know, it's a tie, you know, it's that. And in, in the same sense, though, one of my, my favorite play on defense was the same play that they ran where we stuffed in for two yards. So – it comes down to stopping the run, being able to run the football. I understand the passing game. I understand t the turnover ratio. But if you say you're a physical football team, some plays you're going to have to show it. When you said the other day at the press conference that weak ISO lead week was your favorite play, I, I almost came out of my shoes. I was happy. <laughs> that just tugs at my heartstrings. <laughs> I went to that play. You can have this play card of a million plays. I mean, you, you have your play card, right, Coach? I mean, you've got every single scenario broken down. But, yeah, you got a pet play, though. I mean, everybody has – that was mine. That play was getting called 10, 12 times. But as you get ready for the Colts, Coach, they've got a new quarterback, but they've got the same coaching staff. So they've got a lot of same personnel, but they got a quarterback that's completely different. As you prepare for that, what becomes more important? What they've done in the past, what Matt Ryan has done, kind of bringing it all together, and when is too much information too much getting ready for one particular team? Well, I don't think too much. there's ever too much information. And um, getting ready for the Colts, I mean, we say that, hey, we're a running football team. If you talk to the Colts, they're going to say, we're a running football team. Yeah. They have an excellent tailback. We may get to the run a little different way, but eventually it's about them blocking that our defensive line, our front seven. They're coming right at us. It's not going to be any, a lot of guesswork. Uh, their tailback will get his carries. We have to stop the run. The times when we haven't played well against them, you know, we played them the first time up there. We gave us some big passes that shouldn't happen. Yeah. But what they were able to do in the running game is what really caused them to win the game. Coach, what did you think of the event on Saturday night, the season premiere, benefiting the Houston Texans Foundation? Uh, I, I think um, it went the way most things go around here from what I've seen. I mean, this year it's a new year, new energy, outstanding job. We raised so much money, more than we've ever raised. And a lot of people kind of contributed to that. It took a team to get that done, to set it up in our indoor facility. 
and then to see our you know I've been seeing all of our players uh, in a in sweaty uniform <laughs> to, to see them dress up to see their beautiful spouses just a great night for Houston Texan football for our entire organization uh, but that's how it seemed like momentum has been going for our organization that way lately coach this past weekend it was week zero in college football you talked about some um, some of your coaches with high school and you know, getting out to see some high school football. Do you get a chance to watch any college football during the season? Watch as a fan, watch as a follower. I know there are probably some players you recruited that are back at Illinois. Do you do you kind of get a chance to to put a an eyeball or two on college football over the weekend? I'm a sports fan. Yeah, start with that. I'm a high school. I'm really a Texas high school football right. fan, right. of course, and then college ball. Um, so whenever I get it, I have some free time during this time. Uh, I watch as many games as possible. I think I watch uh, most of the college games that were on this past weekend. Looking forward, don't, really the only weekend that we as coaches, we talk about time off, uh, this coming weekend. Yeah. We'll get a chance to be high school fans uh, on Friday and then, of course, Saturday to see all the games. I'm looking forward to that. USC and UCLA in the Big Ten, that just seems like a natural right. Well, not quite, though. <laughs> what do you think of that? Well, I mean, it does. A little bit, it does. Uh, maybe more so SC uh, mm. as a natural. I mean, there's so many classic SC, uh, Ohio, USC, oh, yeah. Ohio State games. Yeah. But nowadays, that's, that's what we have. There's realignment in NFL. So as we keep growing our game, that's mm -hmm. a part of it. And these super conferences, if you're a college football fan, you want to see a good game each week to bring in two powers like that into the Big Ten. And, and what, the, of course, the SEC has done uh, is pretty special. And I'm excited about the University of Houston going uh, to the Big 12, too. And excited about what Bay, we have a lot of the Baylor Bears here. And, <laughs> and then the Texas Longhorns, the Texas A&M Aggies. You just look at the programs around here, you can get pumped up about ball. Yeah, there are a lot of players in the state of Texas in college football. There's no question about that. Coach, you did spend a few years in college. Did you – have you any sense of what those college years mean to how you do things now and, and how what impact those years in coaching college have put on you as now an NFL head coach again? Uh, absolutely. I, um, I, I think in an ideal world, if you're drawing the blueprint, I think you can benefit from being a, a high school coach. Yeah. In my situation, yeah, yeah. I was a junior high school coach. Same. And then I was a high school coach. And then to get a chance to work with college athletes, you just you, you have an idea of, of what the skill set is and how you relate to guys at those ages. I think it only helps you. And you learn about teaching fundamentals, which is going to come down to mm -hmm. whether we win or we lose. An NFL game this year is about fundamentals. And you get all of that uh, back then. It only helps you be a better professional coach. Coach, thanks a lot for joining us. Good luck this week and next week as you get ready for the Colts. Anytime. Looking forward to it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.